Naming alkanes is going to be the topic in this second lesson in a chapter on organic chemistry. And it's exactly what we're going to learn how to do is name simple alkanes. Now, it turns out the actual process is going to be a little bit more complicated than we even get here. So, but for your typical high school class, this will be sufficient. And uh, it turns out even what we might teach uh, students in a year of organic chemistry in college, even what we teach them there uh, is not even sufficient. It turns out even if you get a PhD in organic chemistry, that may not be sufficient for you to be proficient at naming organic compounds. So it turns out even synthetic organic chemists who's occupation is to make organic compounds. It turns out sometimes this just gets so complicated that you might make something and you may not know how to name it as a PhD synthetic organic chemist. And this is your life, right? And so what they do is they send a picture of the structure off to these guys in France who are the official IUPAC namers, we say, and they will come back and actually work through all the rules and give you the name. But the idea is that sometimes these structures get so complex, so complicated that naming them is a huge pain in the butt. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually only deal with simpler alkanes. That's all you're likely to see in your typical high school class. And so the rules we have are a little bit simplified set of rules, but trust, you know, rest assured, this actually gets harder than even what we're gonna cover here. Now this lesson is part of my high school chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson or when I get around to posting my next playlist, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so naming alkanes here. And you got to realize that there's uh, one big division here. We break up a an alkane here into what we call the parent chain, which is the longest continuous chain of carbons. And then everything that's a branch coming off that's gonna be called a substituent. And the name is broken up in similar ways. We're actually gonna name the substituents first and the parent chain always comes at the end of the name. All right, so if we look here, if we wanna find that longest continuous chain of carbon atoms here. So here, if I start say from the left end, I can go one, two, three, well, I could go four, five, but I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And whether I go up to get eight or off to the right to get eight, it doesn't matter. And so either one of these groups could be part of that longest chain. So same thing down here. So I could have actually started right here instead of off to the left. And I could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so these are totally equivalent. And so it didn't actually matter which one I incorporated. So, but I do want to divide this up into the parent chain here. And we're gonna get a parent chain looking like this. And then these other two things coming off the parent chain, these branches are going to be your substituents. Now we're naming alkanes and it turns out when you name an alkane, you're gonna end your, the name of your parent chain with an A-N-E ending. So an A-N-E suffix, if you will. And then we have these lovely numerical prefixes to start the name. And it turns out they're not, uh, some of them are, are, are ones you'll be familiar with, some are not. So it turns out that one carbon is signified by the prefix meth. And so a one carbon alkane is methane. Two carbons is eth. And so a two carbon alkane is uh, ethane. Three is prop. And so a three carbon alkane is propane. That's what you, what you put in your gas grill. So. A four carbon chain is bute, B-U-T, and so a four carbon alkane is butane. That's what's in uh, your common butane lighters. Five carbons is pent, and this one's not so bad because a pentagon is a five-sided figure. Well, pentane is a five carbon alkane. Hex is six, and hexane is a six carbon alkane, just like a hexagon is a six-sided figure. So seven is maybe not so common. Hept uh, hept, H-E-P-T, and heptane is a seven carbon alkane. Eight, oct, like an octagon. So octane is an eight carbon alkane. Nonane is a nine carbon alkane. And decane, just like a decade is 10 years, decane is a 10 carbon alkane. And so there's one through 10. You're probably worth memorizing those lovely 10. Uh, I've put them on your study guide and I'll make sure they make their way up onto the screen here as well. And so in this case, we've got our parent chain here highlighted in blue or circled in blue, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons long. Therefore, the parent chain here is going to be called octane. That's going to come at the very end of the name. And we'll actually name the substituents first. And whereas the uh, parent chain is going to name, uh, be named with an A-N-E ending, the substituents are going to be named with a Y-L ending or a Y-L suffix instead. And so this is a one carbon substituent. And again, meth means one. And so in this case, this is what we call a methyl group.
And so the substituents always end with a YL, not with an ANE. Parent chain always ends with the ANE, not the YL. So that's a methyl group. Now this is two carbons, and so two carbons is eth, and in this case being a substituent, this is going to be an ethyl group. And so if you look at naming substituents then, from one carbon all the way to ten carbons, you've got methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, heptyl, uh, I'm sorry, hexyl, skipped one, heptyl, octyl, nonyl, and decyl. That's the way that works. Cool, you're probably not going to see too much bigger than like methyl, ethyl, and propyl in all likelihood. All right, now we've got to actually give the location of where these are located on the parent chain as well. And so next rule is you actually need to number your continuous parent chain from one end or the other. You either start with carbon number one over at this end, or you start with carbon number one over at this end. And what you want to do is that as you're numbering it from one and you know, in sequential order, in this case, all the way up to eight, the first substituent you encounter, you want it to be attached to the lowest possible number. So if I start with carbon number one right here, this would be carbon number two, and then this would be carbon number three, where my ethyl substituent would be attached. And so in this case, the first substituent I encounter in numbering left to right is the ethyl group, and it's at carbon three. Well, if we go to the other side, if I make this carbon one, then this would be carbon two, and that's where my methyl group is attached. And the first substituent I encounter is now attached to carbon number two if I number right to left. And I want the first substituent I encounter to be attached to the lower carbon number of the parent chain. So we're actually going to number it right to left instead. So this is carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so now I can see that the methyl group is attached to carbon number two of octane, and the ethyl group is attached to carbon number six of octane. And we call these numbers where the methyl and ethyl are located, those are called the chain locators, just where on the parent chain the substituent is located. And so it turns out when we name this, we're going to name the substituents first, we're going to name the methyl and the ethyl first, and we're going to put their chain locator out in front of them to give where they're located on the parent chain. And you put a hyphen in between that chain locator and the name. So we're going to say, in this case, not just ethyl, but we're actually going to say 6-ethyl. And we're not just going to say methyl, we're going to say 2-methyl as part of the name. Now the last rule, when you've got multiple substituents, you name them in alphabetical order. So we're actually going to put ethyl in the name before methyl in the name because it's in alphabetical order. Notice it's not an order of size. The ethyl is bigger than the methyl in this case, but it's not about size. It's about alphabetical order. And so if we name this thing now, we're going to have 6-ethyl and then 2 methyl, you'll notice that every time you see a number, it will be separated from the letters by hyphens here. So when you got these chain locators. And then the longest chain here was eight carbons, that's octane. And it's just one big long word. No space between the last substituent and the parent chain. You just state your substituents and go right into the parent chain as one big long word. And so this compound is going to be named as 6-ethyl-2-methyl-octane. All right, so in this example, first thing again, we got to find our longest continuous carbon chain. And I can see that I've got a branch point here. And this branch point is longest going off to the right here with these one, two, three carbons. But whether I go up to the left or down, it is two carbons in any direction. And any one of those could be labeled as the part of the longest continuous chain, the parent chain. And so uh, this part over here is definitely part of this parent chain. But from here, I could either go down or up or just off to the left, which is obviously the easiest thing to do here. So, but the key is that it doesn't have to be the chain that's right across the middle, left to right. It's just whatever the longest continuous chain of carbons you could possibly have. So there's my longest continuous chain of carbons. In this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long. And the prefix for six is hex. So this is gonna be called hexane as your parent chain. And that leaves these two to be substituents. One right there, and one right there. And again, substituents named with a YL ending, and these are two carbon substituents each, so they're both ethyl groups.
And in this case, now we got a number that longest chain so that the first substituent we encounter gets the lowest possible number. And if I go left to right, then this would be carbon number one, carbon number two, and we'd encounter either one of these substituents at carbon number three. If we go right to left, then this is carbon number one, this is number two, number three, and we wouldn't encounter one of these substituents until carbon number four. And so now left to right is gonna be the better way of numbering this. And so this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so in this case, we can see that the ethyl groups are both attached at carbon number three of the, of the parent chain. And so they're gonna get chain locators with a three in there. But before we name this, if you've got actually, it turns out, identical substituents, more than one of exactly the same thing, so in this case, more than one ethyl or more than one methyl or more than one propyl, it turns out you're not going to say it twice, but you're going to use a little prefix to tell me that you have two ethyls. And so it turns out with one, you just say the name. But if you have two of them, you say diethyl. With three, you say triethyl. With four, you would say tetraethyl. And technically, there's pentaethyl and hexaethyl, but you're probably not going to see it. So, but di, tri, and tetra for two, three, or four. And so in this case, we've got two. And so instead of saying uh, three ethyl, we're actually going to say diethyl. So we'll start there. Substituents first. So we're going to have, leave myself a little room. So diethyl. Here's the deal though, if you say diethyl, that means you have two of them and you need to list both of their chain locators first, even if they have exactly the same chain locator. So I've got to put that three in here twice. And so it turns out you put a comma between chain locators. And so this is three, three diethyl and that's all our substituents. And so we go straight into the parent chain here of hexane. Cool. So, and the truth is, this is actually a fairly simple alkane. So definitely more complicated than some of the ones uh, uh, you might see on your typical exam and stuff like that. But I don't really anticipate in high school you seeing anything more complicated than this. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to promote the channel and make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems in naming alkanes, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.